We're here with Animals of Montana in Montana, uh, and I've got Dave from McKay Photography Academy that runs these fantastic tours. Over the course of this trip, we're going to be kind of comparing. I've got the Sigma 85, as I said in the intro. You've got the Canon 85. You've got a lot of experience shooting with that because you have and are a portrait photographer and you've been a wedding photographer. I think you could still say you are. You shoot them occasionally. Um, so a good amount of experience. What, what do you like about this lens? Uh, the overall quality of the lens uh, in the images is just fantastic. Um, you know, this is a lens that it's an expensive piece of glass, uh, and we rented it, tried it out, and then it was, we had to have it. And uh, there's something about it. It's 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 not just that it's sharp. It it it's incredibly sharp, but there's something about the images, uh, and I've never been able to put a word to it. But there's um, just a certain feel to the images that I can't get with any other lens. I know what you're talking about. I mean, the kind of quality that is hard to describe, right. but just the colors, the contrast, Everything. the look. It is just a fantastic lens. Yep. This Sigma is a lot cheaper. It, it's in a 1.4 versus a 1.2, so there's some differences there, but I've been extremely happy with the Sigma Art Series lenses, the 35, the 50, and now the 85. Over the course of this trip, we'll talk about focusing speed, both on the 5D Mark IV. Yep. I'm shooting on the Sony with the Sigma adapter. We'll talk about quality differences and how it looks at the various apertures, and just that We'll see, can the Sigma match up against the Canon that has this look that we can't even quite describe but love? Yeah, for sure. It's been a lot of fun. Maybe we should say briefly what we've shot over this past week with these two lenses. Yeah. I mean, we have shot... Uh, well, where are we? We're in Montana. We're in kind of, you know, an unexciting conference room right now to bring you this wrap up. There's a lot of heads over there, by the way. Yeah, there are a lot of, you know you're in Montana when there's a lot of deer heads and elk heads on the wall. Um, over this last week, we have shot tigers, lynx, uh, cowboys, incredible scenery in Yellowstone. I'll say it again, I've said it in my Instagrams that have gone out, which you should follow both McKay Live and Photo Rec Toby on Instagram. Uh, Yellowstone in winter is an unbelievable place. It ranks up there for me in like top three places I've ever been to ever visit any time of year. It's just that special. Yeah, it really is. And you know, we travel all over the world, right? You know, together we've traveled all over the world and this is, you know, a place that most of your viewers can get to and I, winter uh, is very, different than summer and it's it's a magical place which by the way how are we photographing tigers in montana well that's working with animals of montana these this uh organization that you have built a relationship with uh and the experience to get to photograph them is it's not your typical zoo they're not behind bars uh you are out there in the wild of montana uh in this beautiful scenery and you get to photograph as i said tigers lynx bear it's been a week now that we've been shooting with the Canon 85 and the Sigma 85, uh, switching them back and forth between the Canon and the Sony, and I think we're ready to kind of give our summary thoughts. Let's run down through some, some of the different things that we've made a conscious effort to test and share with you some results. Yeah, for sure. I think first up, let's talk a little bit about focus speed. Now, the Canon has never won any awards for focus speed. Uh, and it's clear in my opinion, and I think you agree, that we found the Sigma to be consistently faster focusing. Yeah, for sure, with, without a doubt. And, and you may want to preface this that I have shot this Canon and loved this Canon lens for a few years now. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, anyway, I, I, it's been my baby. Well, it was Allie's baby, now it's, I, I took it. Allie being his wife, who is also a professional photographer, and we're gonna share some of her thoughts too as we go through. Uh, Let's talk about sharpness, where we had an interesting conversation with Allie. Uh, between these two lenses, which did you find sharper? Yeah, the Sigma was sharper, yep. You know, Allie's comment on that, uh, so we're both portrait photographers mm -hmm. as well, have been for many years, and Allie is the one that has to uh, actually clean up, you know, faces, uh, you know, soften wrinkles, take yep. out acne, things like that. So, do you want, so that brings up the question, do you want the ultimate sharpless lens when typically most of you who are watching this are probably interested in this lens for portraits? Right, and so it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, kind of a difficult call here because from Allie's standpoint, 
Uh, she actually prefers it not to be quite as sharp, mm -hmm. uh, especially dealing with teenagers with acne mm -hmm. or uh, older folks or people with, with wrinkles. Mm -hmm. uh, she finds that it actually takes a little more work to actually soften some of those, those areas. Yep. Up. And now let's move from sharpness to that kind of, uh, you know, we struggle to, to name this when we uh, introduce this video, uh, that, that quality that the 85 brings to it is the Sigma there as well? Kind of the colors, the fall off, that out of focus area in the background. Does the Sigma match up against the Canon there? It does. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And again, I'm a, I'm a tried and true Canon lens user here. Um, I did not expect the results that we got out of the Sigma that we've gotten. And you know that that term bokeh, you know the the, the depth as it falls off our subject. Uh, that was one of the big things that I was really kind of be looking for yeah i was going to be looking for yeah and um that it it's it's there you yeah. know so you right off the bat it's, it's a little bit sharper has has definitely that nice softness as it falls off um yeah good question one other thing that we did see in the canon uh absent in the sigma is chromatic aberration uh you know this this mm -hmm. at one four uh obviously it gets you know, even more noticeable in the Canon, but that also is a benefit of the Canon that it shoots 1.2 versus only 1.4 as its widest aperture. Right. Uh, some benefits of being able to shoot at 1.2? Well, you know, I, I very rarely shoot at that. Even this lens is so beautiful and I, and I typically find that that's too shallow most of the times, but there are those times, uh, you know, if I'm doing a portrait and I actually want it to, to fall off from, from right here back, uh, you know, really quickly and softly. That can be a really neat uh, kind of look. Um, I find that uh, that one two can come in handy. And now let's talk a little bit about build quality and we'll, we'll lump into their kind of size and weight. Uh, the Sigma, it's a beast. Um, it is heavier, uh, it is larger. A benefit of the Canon is weather sealed. Dust and moisture resistant Sigma does not offer that. Let's, let's get down to the price. $1,199 Sigma is currently selling for. So $85.14 for $1,199. Canon $85.12 for $18.99. All of these factors we just went through, Dave, which would you buy? I, I would actually, I would pick up the Sigma. Yeah, for, for myself. Again, the difference between 1.2 and 1.4 that's one factor. The weather sealed is one factor, um, and maybe the weight is the other factor. But all of those things, comparatively, the Sigma being sharper, uh, the uh, you know the price faster point, focus. faster focus. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very rare that the it, with a lens like this, it's a weather situation. Most of the times, portrait lens. You know, so I mean, for myself, for that price range, uh, I, I really I'm stunned by how beautiful the, the lens is. I really am. Great. I, I agree. Um, you know, I've been very happy with the Sigma 50 and the Sigma 35, those both as well. Uh, I, the Sigma is fantastic and has blown me away, and they continue to do that with this Art Series line. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking earlier, one, one item is, it, you know, you save $700, you could put that into another beautiful prime lens, almost enough to, to, to get a 50, I think. That's right. Prime lens. So, so there's... You know, there's some factors. I do see where some people would say, hey, okay, I'm, yep. I'm going to go with the Canon for these other few factors, but for I think most of the people out there, even for myself as a professional photographer, uh, I'm, I'm pretty blown away by that lens. You know, you say this all the time, but uh, one final thought is, you know, all this gear, all of this technical stuff, all that, none of it really matters unless you get out there and shoot. You know, whether it's with us, with somebody else on your own, you know, but you've got to get out there and shoot. I mean, photography should really be about the joy of seeing and the journey of photography and seeing the world, you know, and, and, and how you see it. So, um, you know, all this only means something if you're out there photographing. That's a great way so to say it. You know, $700 difference is uh, easy, plane ticket someplace exciting. Absolutely. It's true. All right. As I said, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, give it a quick thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye. You heard you say vegetarian. <laughs> and liberal. <laughs> uh, and YouTube star. <laughs> yeah, those are extra tasty. We taste like ramen because that's all we can afford. <laughs>